The Senate unanimously passed a bill to provide $20 million in grants for broadband expansion related to distance learning and telehealth. We've heard too many stories about students who live in areas where they're expected to go to school and they don't have internet. That story alone should tell us why rural broadband should be a priority across the state. Every Minnesota student deserves the same opportunity. We cannot have kids drive into Hardee's or McDonald's anymore to do their homework. This bill also deserves credit for the grant program that enables uh, telemedicine, which I think will be one of the legacies of this pandemic, is that counties will be delivering health care tele telemedicine-wise. If you look at today's modern capacities and needs, it's 100 meg down and, and 10 meg up. When you lay that map over the current map that you see, over 50% of rural Minnesota access doesn't have access to broadband today. I'm tired of being 10 years, uh, uh, after six years of the program, the vast majority of Minnesota is still a decade behind from access capacities and, and, uh, and modern services. I think it's important to note uh, that it is the rural areas that are uh, struggling the most with this, and uh, we as a state need to to, to make sure that everyone in the state, all children, all citizens, deserve to have access to high-speed internet services. I appreciate Senator Westrom's bill, which focuses on broadband grants to the unserved. That means those are areas that don't have service. That is critical. It's critical now in this pandemic for our education. It's critical for the future. The second part of this bill deals with telemedicine. Telemedicine is revolutionizing how we access medical care where and when we need it. And that's one of the things that crises do. A pandemic spurs on innovation. The bill's There's author, Senator Tory Westrom, joined me. On the Senate floor, you said that the pandemic is demonstrating that broadband is now an essential utility. How far does $20 million move the needle? Well, $20 million is another big step, another good start uh, of emergency money. Uh, certainly, it won't cover the entire state. But Shannon, uh, our focus is to really highlight the unserved areas which are about seven or 8% of the state remaining. And so every one of those percentages, we can uh, help improve by getting rural broadband out to, improves the entire state of Minnesota. And many of those 8% that are unserved are in rural areas, but not all of them. Some of them are in rural townships right outside the metro area. So $8 million of the $20 million is for educational purposes specifically related to the COVID-19 pandemic and distance learning. Will the aid get to those who need it in time? How, how does that piece work? Uh, certainly that money, the sooner we can get it out the door, the better. But in some cases, that, that money is going to be reimbursing school districts that have already taken the leap of faith to find a way to get internet connections to some of their students and families that have not had internet connection prior to the emergency declaration. And so uh, the sooner we can get it out, the better, but it does allow districts that have provided internet for students that have not had access to it to get reimbursed. And so uh, over the next few months, they will tally those numbers uh, in their districts and what they've done to help, and then they can seek reimbursement. But the sooner we can get this aid package out, the sooner we can make sure schools are aware of it, and in some cases where they have not already provided that internet, uh, they can go ahead and get hotspots or find another way to get an internet connection for those students if they can. It may not cover everybody, but it will certainly help cover a lot more students uh, and save them from having to drive to the school to sit outside in their car to do their homework. And rather they can do it from the comforts of their own home like all other students are doing during this distance learning time and uh, education online. Also, there's $2 million uh, in, in this bill that passed unanimously that will go towards uh, the purchase of equipment related to telehealth. Does this in any way signal a change in how medicine may be practiced in rural areas? I think it really does. Uh, this pandemic has forced us to find new ways to use technology and to do things differently than we've done in the past. 
and healthcare is probably at the forefront of that revolutionary change. Uh, telehealth is something uh, we in the Senate have been promoting for several years now, but I think this has really expo expanded it greatly beyond what many people have thought, uh, and it makes sense. In many cases, if you're feeling ill, you can tell the doctor or your health prov care provider your symptoms and go through that same checklist you do in the office right over telehealth medicine and save uh, bringing uh, any of those germs into a hospital or a clinic. And so I think we will find the benefit in not having people feeling ill coming into the hospital in many cases down the road, as well as in rural areas. Uh, these nurses and the doctors can meet with customers and consumers all over the county or the rural area and save many, many miles of driving from one place to the other in, in many cases. Now, we don't want this to be viewed as a total replacement because there is a certain place for a doctor visit. But in many cases where it's checkups and uh, preliminary screenings, uh, this will be a very, very big help to rural Minnesota and all across our state to uh, deliver this telehealth and improve these technological situations that are, that are being strained right now. Senator Tory Westrom, I want to thank you for taking the time today. Thank, thank you, Shannon. Uh, this is a great bill for rural Minnesota and rural broadband uh, to help connect Minnesota.